Is Classroom of the Elite's biggest problem about to leave after Season 3, Episode 6? Is he talking about Kushida? I think he's talking about Yamagot. Let's see what Mr. Brandon has to say. So seemingly, Garbage Day has arrived in the world of Classroom of the Elite. Yeah. Because what they introduced with this special exam, there's some BS going on behind the scenes. You're doing too well, kids, so we're going to force something that makes sure at least one person gets expelled unless you... So my reasoning for why the school is doing this is not just unnecessary unfairness, but actually it is unnecessary unfairness. Or maybe it's necessary unfairness because the whole point of the school is to like procure a bunch of sociopaths who are going to be the, like the most elite politicians and world leaders that needs to be able to play this cold, ruthless game of society, right? So in life, there are unfair situations like this. When it's thrown at you, how will you act, right? And not only that, now like... The top and the bottom, you know, like Hirata and the idiot trio, right? No one's really safe. Maybe they're going to go for them. Who really knows, right? So it's a very interesting scenario that I think is fucked up, but it doesn't make sense from the context of this school. This, this school is fucked up. You cough up 20 million points. And if you watched a couple of videos back, you know, me and Yamauchi, we don't get along. I find it. Listen. I was the biggest uh, Yamagot fan. Listen, I love the black room memes and stuff, but the moment he told Michan to shut up is when everything went out the window. Insufferable. Apparently, he has a fandom. To my surprise... It's a meme fandom, though. It's an actual meme fandom. The comment sections were raving about him, and I'm just like, nah, expel this kid. <laughs> and honestly... True. My prayers might be getting answered. Now there's a big class here. It's entirely possible that our boy's gonna manipulate some pieces and target someone. Mm. And the only character who's currently been causing a ruckus outside- I think Kushida is an absolutely viable target because she's not only been mentioned once but twice specifically by Anakochi in season two and season three about someone that we wanna cut out. She's a literal cancer to our group. But at the same time, She's a lot more useful than Yamauchi. Like her informant skills and networking that she's got is very valuable. So I wonder if Aaron Kunji is actually gonna, you know, like go through it. And it just hardly makes sense that like people would vote for Kushida, right? Because she's got this, I mean, she's, she's played everyone like a fucking fiddle. She's got a fake mask on, everybody loves her. No one's gonna vote for her unless we somehow have the craziest plan that Anakoji has. Side of Rune is Yamuchi. He was like, he was gun ho about exposing drama and just being an absolute scumbag. If he becomes the fall guy, Garbage Day's gonna arrive and this And like he is the most antagonized character right now. Bro literally started the most drama like a couple of episodes ago. Like he is a prime target for everyone to cast a vote on. This show's gonna be smelling so much sweeter when the trash is taken out. If you're a Yamauchi enthusiast, my apologies, but me and him don't get along. I think Brandon would find Yamauchi a lot more palpable if he enjoyed the black room memes that I think a lot of people aren't really introducing him to. And this very well could be the happiest day of my life watching this show if they go where I hope they're going. I have a full live reaction to today's wonderful episode of the Classroom of the Elite over on my Patreon if you want to see my full and good thoughts there over there if you're interested. Now this was a very interesting episode. I don't know like if you were to ask me between seasons two and three what is the better season? I mean it's hard to say because we're only still too early right we're only halfway in like in season two also if we were just at the halfway point would i think that was like the best season ever no i think what really pushed it over the edge was the Ryuin versus anakoji fight so if there is a similar scene like that if there is some really impactful scene in the last half of the season like it's way too early to cast judgment only halfway through this one and while i think the first couple of episodes of season three are weaker than pretty much anything in season two I thought episode one was fucking lit though, just because of what Yamagod did to Arisu. Two, three through six to me is more enjoyable than anything in season two. I anything in season two. I guess bro doesn't really care about the fight. I just really like the vibe of where they're going personally. And honestly, the idea that there's a lot of things happening and we're not exactly sure for what reason. There's a lot of setup, a lot of sabotage, but most importantly, a lot of cruelty right now. This is the first time. It's it's a school record. No one, everyone passes. No one's getting expelled. It's hip hip hooray class. Everyone did so well, and instead of getting, you know, instead of getting what's it called, rewarded, the school punishes you. This is a cruel game. I mean, it is an absolutely cruel game. This entire school is a fucking. It's class of the sociopath. The teachers. Well, the interesting thing is the the that Anakoji made was why would Arisu's dad ever make such a claim? Like he's such a reasonable person. Why would he do this? Right. But then Arisu says that his, her dad is suspended. 
So it's like, who else is in play right now? And the only person that I can think of that wants this special exam to try to get one person expelled that definitely is not going to be Ayano Koji. But let's just go with the logic that this person is trying to get someone expelled specifically. Ayano Koji's dad, right? Because he wants the kid home, back to the white room. So I, I, I think it's a stupid plan overall. If it's your goal of this to try to get one person expelled is to get on a coach to get back to the white room. Like, there's no shot he would ever get listed, right? It doesn't make sense, but maybe it is, like, white room influence. And there were some sus scenes when Ichinose and Anakoji were talking in the streets. And they looked at the street light or some shit. And it looked, it looked like there might have been a camera there. There was a lot of focus there for some reason, right? Class unity. And then it's like, yeah, listen, uh, because you're doing so well, someone's going home. Someone's getting voted off this island. Yeah, you're gonna have to do a do a class vote. The simplest test, but honestly, the most interesting Brutal. because yeah. this really pushes characters against the other. Class unity is no longer class unity. It's different groups voting for each other. To it's it's full on survivor now, man. Each subgroups in this like class are gonna start, you know, uh, str like strategizing votes. It's like okay, let's all cast our votes on this guy, you know, stuff like that. Wonder what Koenji's gonna do though. No one really hates Koenji, though. Sudo definitely does. But you know what I mean? Koenji, as much of an arrogant, pompous douchebag he is, I don't think he really has a target on his back like Yamauchi does. To save each other's skin. And clearly the people who are most hated or most pushed back against the idiot are trio. going away. It would be clear who would be expelled if it wasn't for Aino Koji. And the idea that there's going to be a top three for both, like, the popular people yeah. and the people who are tiptoeing on world time. If you're the number one most voted in a positive way, you get a get out of jail free card. Armor, yep. Expulsion. Now, I originally thought, oh, this isn't going to be that bad because you could easily keep the whole class together. Because, I mean, similar to the end of the uh, little field trip they did at the start of the season, we saw how someone saved the other with points. I was like... But it's 20 million points, right? It's like, how the fuck are we going to be able to do that? The only way... Like, nobody has 20 mil in our class. Nakamo might, though. Maybe Manabu. Like, maybe we can get a little bit of help from the senpais. Would they ever do that? I have no clue. But that's the only way that I can think of right now. Oh, if you can transfer that expulsion-free card to someone else. Each Nose does have 15 mil, though. Each Nose does have 15 mil at the moment. So... All we have got to do is, well, it's almost like 16 mil, actually. So all we got to really do is cover that extra 4 mil then, right? Like the 4.1 mil, which is a little bit more feasible than the entire 20 by ourselves. Then whoever gets top score or top votes in this. Why would Nagama help Koji? Be to get a favor? Like, I'm just theorizing. These aren't supposed to make sense. I'm thinking of any type of possibility that is possible. Why would he help? There is no fucking point. But unless he wants him to get, like, a, what's a threat? What, you don't want me to fucking theorize? You don't want me to fucking guess about what could and couldn't happen? This class can then save the person being expelled. Nope, it's for you and you alone. Which actually has my mind racing because whoever ends up getting that could then be targeted in the future, but not in a negative way, right? Like, if we have more votes like this in the future, then you could very well say, well, so-and-so has the get-out-of-jail-free card rather than one of us having to go home. Let's purposely target them because they will be saved. You can see something like that happening, and I'd be interested if that could potentially cause drama because you're... Well, the idiot trio is seemingly being prepared against Hirata last episode, right? Hirata seems to be perfectly safe, but there's a lot of dispute going on between the idiot trio and them, so I feel like whoever gets the get-out-of-jail-free card might not really be safe. I'm not really sure. I don't know where we're going with this, but I think that Yamagod is most likely going to get expelled at this rate. You're like, no, I want to keep that for an actual rainy day and, you know, just different things. This is kind of the fun of Classroom and the Elite. They always get you thinking about the future, even when the present's so interesting. The unfortunate thing is the bottom three, the people who are most likely to get voted off, the one who does score the worst gets removed. And unless you can cough up 20 million points, which I don't think anyone can, well... The only people capable of such a thing is Nagumo. Maybe Manabu? I don't fucking know. Each Nose does have, again, almost 16 mil. So then we just have to somehow save a 4 mil together. And would Each Nose lend us the money? Absolutely. Each Nose would 100% lend Anakoji the money. Outside our girl at the end of the episode because she's, uh, she's taking one for the team. She's uh, dating class president Nagumo and... Ugh, date me, Hawanami. Who knows what else ungodly things he'll have her do. Most likely for points. I mean, that's, you know... Props. They did kind of scan back to her points and before the date scene, right? So obviously it's kind of implied that there's some 
Not prostitution, but you know. To her and what she's doing for her class, but uh, I feel like Ido Koji's going to have to come clean up some messes in the future, but that's a uh, janitorial duty for another day. That's like future art stuff, I guess. Is, you know, like I mentioned last episode, I think it was, you know, we haven't seen a lot of Horikita, and while we didn't see a lot of her this episode, it was kind of nice to have her a little more... What? So that she can be brought back to get shit on by Ryuin? <laughs> Suzume had some cool moments in the earlier scenes of the episode where she kind of like silenced everybody in the class while they were fighting and kind of united them through leadership. But then in the Ryuin scene, Ryuin was just like fucking hunting her his prey again like in season 1 and 2. Suzume like just can't do anything in front of him. She sucks. She has no poker face. Her body language just absolutely tells that it's a bunny and cowering in fear while a tiger is just staring at you. On screen because she's pretty much of the mindset that uh, Ryun's gone. Like, he's out. He's getting... She really wants him gone. Honestly, yeah, Ryun did waterboard K. Yes, he's an absolute menace. Yes, he drinks Don Perry of sparkling water like it's fucking champagne and alcohol at seemingly clubs at school. Yes. He seems like a little bit of a poser, but I have a soft spot for Dragon Boy. Even though he was a villain, I think that he's a compelling villain, and I think he's very interesting, especially with this new arc where he's seemingly just all down on himself, but maybe he's back. Maybe he's got the fire back. Makes you want to root for him, you know? I hope he stays around. Vote off the island. Sayonara. See you later. And unfortunately, some of my audio got corrupted, so I'm just going to re-record from mindset of what I said during this moment. Uh, basically, I was just talking about how, like, Ryun's pretty screwed right now but obviously with the whole point system being built up potentially that could be how he could get saved or i don't know maybe there's gonna be something else but uh when you think about anakoji's class yamauchi really does feel like the only one that could yeah. logically be targeted like i want kushi the gun but in the perspective of other classmates the normies right they don't know about that kushi the plot line they just know that yamagod was starting a lot of shit so who could it really be other than him? Especially given his recent outbursts. And that's why I think, outside of my own personal hatred for this character, he's the only one recently... That's right. I would 100% simp for Ryu, and despite anything Sakura has ever done, because Sakura is a weak, fucking, limp noodle bitch. Nothing good about that character. Self-pitying, little weak bitch. Hide back in your fucking shell, bitch. But see, Ryuin? I don't care if he commits a war crime. I don't care if he waterboarded K. Because he's a compelling character. That continues to show me interest because he's coming back. He's got the fire in his eyes. I've never seen the fire in Sakura's eyes. She fucking sucks. And now people are saying, yeah, she's gonna have her moment. I'm waiting. We're fucking halfway in. Where is she? She's nothing. She only exists to sim for Anakoji. Straight up, she's useless. Like, if you tell me that this character does better later, I will give you the benefit of the doubt. But by, like, but just anime only content? She is absolutely fucking useless. I am like sad we invested those initial couple episodes into her in season one. That was wasted fucking episodes. Like her the fucking camera was more important than Sakura, dude. Who has rubbed people the wrong way, right? Because he was like very gun ho about the, hey, oh, I heard this rumor. This is great. Smiling, poking the bear. Like no one liked him in that moment. And I think we're also kind of forgetting that Arisu took out Yamauchi earlier in that episode. What happened then? What? Because, like, I thought that's somehow related to him just, like, getting happy about the drama. I thought that he was the one that could have spread the rumors on behalf of Arisu because she was doing shit like that to each and too, right? But it's like, that kind of just got glossed over. I wonder what happened between their meeting. And, and everyone thought he was a douchebag. So I could see how you could whisper in one character's ear to then whisper in another and have this telephone game happen about why Yamauchi deserves to go home. If someone has to fall on the face, Yamauchi's just a loudmouth idiot. Like, you can see the train of True. thought. The quote at the beginning of this episode, I always love the classroom of the elite quotes. It's something about how, like, it's better to be stabbed than to stab someone or... I am not of that mindset. I, I'm sorry. I'm, that's probably like a deep philosophical mindset of, you know, don't cause pain on the others. It's better to, you know, take it yourself. No. No, nah, best scenario is you, none of you take it, but I ain't the one that's going to be stabbed. If, if me or you going to get stabbed, you going to get stabbed. You know, it's better to be hurt than hurt someone yourself. And it's like, well, huh. usually, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'd rather yeah. be hurt than have a random person on the street be hurt. Fuck the random person. Why should I be hurt? Huh? Koenji would never allow that. Oh, fuck that. Sure. 
But no. there's definitely some people I've met and know that I'm like, fuck that. They deserve to be true. hurt more than me. True, and true. And honestly, I feel like that quote's real. Yamauchi, maybe he's saying that to Yamauchi. Really gonna come back full swing when uh, our boy purposely targets. Now there are these little groups, these little cliques that are gonna be, you know, voting for each other. Because here's the thing, right? Even if like 90% of the class makes a group of three or four and votes for each other so that they're safe, the person who's not a part of that group and one of those people is going to be Rune is depends uh, which family member it is. But yes, yes, absolutely. Is you know, you can see how it's not going to save your ass completely, but it gets... I am the most important person to myself. And that should be the same thing for each and every one of you. You guys should live your lives as the main character. You are your own main character of your own life. You have full control over your life. Why the fuck should you take on the burden of other people? That doesn't matter to you. Now, family members getting included. Now you're getting a little bit more nuanced. Lyra's saying, oh, would you rather, you know, get your mom stabbed or your dad stabbed? Now, there's a little bit of nuance there. Obviously, everybody's family situation is different. For, but, but for the most part, if you kind of ignore all that stuff, I think everybody is their own main character. And they should love themselves just as much as how Koenji loves himself. Now, that doesn't mean that you should look down on other people and call them NPCs. Unless they are actual NPCs in anime that you're reacting to. But you know what I mean. It's yet out of the quicksand at the very least. And I don't know what it was exactly about this episode. In a lot of ways, it was one of the more basic episodes of the season. But I think it was the most interesting out of the six by far. For I think it's just the premise of the special exam about how it's like casting votes and finding like teams and trying to see that like, there's like the top three and the bottom three. And there's also like a little lifeline. Like this is straight out of this is straight up just survival shit. You know, you got like the idol thing that just kind of like protect you from like a vote. I think that this is turning out into something really spicy. And Arisu again, she just like, bro, she starts off the season. No, she starts off end of last season saying, I'm going to crush you fake genius. And then season three trailer or episode one of season three, she's like, I said, I'm going to crush you. But I'm going to take a little detour and crush Arisu first. And then we're back at the end of the... Uh, sorry, Ichinose first. And then we're done the Ichinose arc. And then Arisu comes out and she's like, Okay, now let's go back to our duel, Koji. Here, I'm going to get myself expelled or you can be exposed. That's, our, that's the conditions. And then the episode right after is like, Hmm, Koji. I'm sorry, but our duel is off yet again. Are we ever going to go with this, Arisu? We are halfway into the season, and we are not doing anything yet. Even though you keep talking shit, I swear to God, this duel has been postponed twice or three times now. For season three. I like the idea of how, you know, even though the way the teacher is explaining this, you can tell she's not she's not for this. She doesn't like this. Like this. Yeah, she actually was kind of bitter about this. It's an unfair rule that she has to enforce because you know the teachers are they're just getting orders too. It's not for her. And as we see with different conversations throughout the episode, there's a lot of shit going on behind the scenes saying, "Oh, do you think it was him?" and everything like that. There's a lot happening, and that's why I think whenever you rewatch an episode of Classroom lately, it's always a fun experience picking up on a couple of little extra breadcrumbs maybe you didn't initially because you're just kind of. Agreed. I've seen season one and season two multiple times as we led into season three together, right? There were so many things that I would have never noticed if I honestly, even with the light novel context too. Having that light novel background information combined with just re-watching scenes like this, like it, there's a lot of things that's like, whoa, holy shit, it was there in front of me all this time. Shooketh from whatever big reveal just happened. It's such a good show. It really is. I find myself loving it more and more. I know Koji just kind of sitting there scheming, smirking. Actually, he's not smirking. He never shows a sign of smile whatsoever. In, in his mind, I bet he's... He's apparently never smiled since the moment he was, like, born. Never have ever smiled. American just doing his thing. Would be nice if, like, this series ended with Anakoji smiling. What, uh, would that make sense, though, for a show like Classroom of the Elite? Maybe he should just fucking be ruthless till the end. But, like, would it be poetic if the end, the final light novel illustration is, like, Anakoji smiling? As he goes into the distance with his girlfriend, Kay. I don't know. I feel like that could be a little happy ending, little head cannon. But does that really suit the theme of this show? I'm not really sure. But, you know, he could easily sit back, let things fall into place as they will. But we know our boy. He definitely has some plan up his sleeve. And I'm interested to see if he can actually save Rune. And uh, if my prayers will be answered and Yamauchi will uh, get voted off that island. Let me know what you thought of this episode down below. Who do you think? Y'all know what to do. Please give Mr. H. Brandon a sub. Like his videos if you did. 
And I do agree. I think that the most likely candidate to get expelled right now is Yamauchi. But this show, it's not that simple. Well, sometimes it is that simple. Sometimes it is just as simple as Ayano Koji was the one spreading the rumors to fucking do other shit again. For, again, it's like self-sabotage again. It's like, what? You again? But Yamauchi, is he really going to be the one? I would like Kushida to go, but I just don't think now is the right timing. And it probably is going to be Yamauchi, right? 